Welcome to Church Spotlight. Today we're on Ingalls Avenue in Pascagoula, Mississippi at East Lawn United Methodist Church. I'm Rena Danley and we've been invited to sit down and talk to their pastor, the Reverend Jean Vance. So join me as we find out the exciting things going on at East Lawn United Methodist Church. Brother Jean, tell me how long you've been pastor at East Lawn. I'm in my third year. I officially start my fourth year in June, but I've been on the coast for nine years. I pastored a Safe Harbor United Methodist Church prior to coming here, which is in Moss Point out on Highway 63, and took it through a building program and then moved here. Great, mm. great. So you're used to the Gulf Coast. I am used to the Gulf Coast, coast including Katrina. I was uh, definitely involved in, in the middle of, of all that happened then. Right. And how was East Lawn affected by Katrina? East Lawn took uh, about four feet of water throughout the church. Uh, but the church responded quickly, and we started doing things to reach out to the community. Did a lot of work in uh, sending volunteers out to homes. And then we had a truck from Kansas parked here for a long time that fixed uh, two meals a day and uh, really kind of fed the community. So uh, uh, in the midst of us trying to do restoration here, we were helping others do restoration and serving them. Right. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yes, it is. That's, and it, uh, that's great. Really, impacted and affected the church by uh, making us more aware of God's blessings and uh, God's presence even in the midst of the storm. Right. Yeah. It, sometimes you know that if, if you never go through anything, you don't know how He can help you through things. Absolutely. That's so. true. That's well, tell me, have you always felt called into the ministry? Well, actually, I did from a young age, but I kind of suppressed that and uh, uh, began my first career was in law enforcement, and I actually was in law enforcement for about 10 That's years. Interesting. Most of that as a drug enforcement agent, and then I worked for the Mississippi Attorney General's Office as a special investigator in the Consumer Protection Division, and have done some other law enforcement work in my 10-year career. But it was in the midst of that law enforcement career that I began to realize that while I enjoyed what I was doing, I was not doing what I was supposed to be doing. Right. And began to examine myself and uh, listen more acutely to the Lord's uh, still small voice in my heart and in my head. And uh, it was uh, uh, then that I surrendered to the ministry and uh, became a, a minister. I'm in my 23rd year of ministry now. So Wow. Yeah. What a story. Yes. Just driving along in your patrol car <laughs> and, and you can still hear God's voice. Oh, yes, and through circumstances and events that happened in my law enforcement career and uh, some of the frustrations that you experienced there, right. I think I'll help prepare me uh, even more to be a minister of the gospel. Right, absolutely, absolutely, to see people in, in that need. Yes, absolutely. You know, that's absolutely. great. What about the history of the church here at East Lawn? It's been here for a long time. Yeah, well, the church actually began in 1943, and... Uh, an interesting side note, it, it's the, this church is here because of Pascagoula First United Methodist. We had the first members come out of that church to start a new church. In 1943, they originally met in tents. Um, we had about 30 people meeting in tents. Um, an interesting side note there is that high winds blew the tents down twice, and they were resilient and put the tents back up. Tenacious. And, and, yeah, and they kept meeting. And, uh, That's great. Uh, and this church had its genesis out of, uh, out of those experiences. That's where the heart began. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Well, when we return, we'll continue our conversation with Brother Gene here at East Lawn United Methodist Church. Stay with us. We're back with Brother Gene Vance, pastor of East Lawn United Methodist Church. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks for being here. Tell me what you would expect on any given Sunday or Wednesday. Well, on Sundays we uh, have uh, Sunday school, of course, before church. It uh, starts at 9.45, but church starts at 11. And I think we have a, a, a vibrant worship service. We do a lot of different things in worship. Uh, we have just an excellent choir uh, we have people involved in worship, not, not just sitting there, but we have liturgists read, and, and uh, I've got a terrific lay pastor in uh, Robert Weathersby who assists me with the service. But it's kind of a uh, more of a uh, traditional service with a little contemporary blend in it, and uh, we have a great time. We do a lot of specials during the year. Uh, we have our 
children come and sing, and uh, they play handbells as well. Oh. And then we have a group called Ingle Bells, not Jingle Bells, Ingle Bells, <laughs> named for Mr. Dolores Ingle, Ingle a, a deceased longtime special member of this church. But we have a great handbell choir. In fact, they played this past Sunday and do a terrific job. And then both of our children's group called Kids Town and Troop Joyful come and sing and uh, bring a lot of delight. We have a special time for children, children's moments uh, that members of the congregation rotate and do various things there. And uh, then we are a church that is called a, a fairly high liturgical church. So we do Holy Communion the first Sunday of every month and uh, have a special time of fellowship with the Lord there. So you cover all ages, basically. Yes, we do. They and can begin to, to, to sing and learn their instruments yes. uh, at an early age, yes. and, and that does help with having a blended service. It does, and it brings such joy and excitement to the worship service to see the enthusiasm of our children and of our uh, handbell choir, because they are very enthusiastic and a, a delight to listen to. Great. That sounds great. And it's so... Um, it's so important to to have a blended service. You you want to not forget your roots, right. but at the same time, you you want to be relevant to the right. generation coming up. Right, and we have a, even more of a contemporary service once a month here. We uh, call it the Gospel Cafe. Oh, and it's led by our youth. They have a little praise band and Robert Weathersby, and uh, some of them even preach occasionally uh, at That's that service. Great. And it's a uh, a little bit more lively music, more, uh, con more uh, uh, enthusiastic, uh, where we can uh, raise our hands and clap and uh, enjoy each other. And then we always have a fellowship time over food. Us Methodists are great at having food at events, so we do that. <laughs> then on Wednesday nights, we continue uh, somewhat uh, of an educational program that combined with worship. We have a fellowship meal every Wednesday night where people of the church can come and receive a good meal. The cook is a member of the church and uh, does an excellent job. And then we break down into uh, uh, two different Bible study classes. One is a Beth Moore study. You've probably heard of Beth Moore. Yes, I have. That my wife is leading, and we have a good attendance at that. And then I conduct a Bible study. And then our youth meet on Wednesday nights and have a time of fellowship, and our children meet on Wednesday nights. So uh, we stay active during the week as well. And that's important to yes, always have something going on. Yes, I is. think that's the sign of a very healthy church. Yes. That's great. Brother Gene, it's just so nice to talk to you and see all the things that are going on at East Lawn. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're at East Lawn United Methodist Church with Pastor Brother Gene Vance. Um, tell me about the membership at East Lawn. Well, currently we have 480 members. We have an average attendance of about 140 and we hit in the in the 200s uh, when we have special events. So uh, I think we're like most churches. You have more on the membership role than a 10. Right. And we're working on addressing that, trying to get uh, intentionally do some things to get more people to return to church. Right. How are you going to go about that? Well, we're going to, uh, we're kind of evaluating our membership list right now to see where we need to do that. And we plan to send out mailers and letters of invitation and do a uh, more personal invitations. Uh, in fact, I've been preaching a series on evangelism about uh, the, the key thing I think for us is to invite, 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 right. and then everything falls under that. And, uh, and welcome, yes, welcome, absolutely. welcome. absolutely. Be, be a, a friendly church, and we've right. been working on that in the past years, and I right. think doing a, a very good job at that. I, I think when people come to worship here, they feel the friendliness and the warmth uh, of the people that are involved here. They can call it home. Yes, they can. That's they good. Can. Let me read your mission statement. Yes. It says to invite people into the life of our church. Yes. Which y'all are doing that. Yes. That's, that's great. Nurture them to become committed disciples and help them find their ministries in the church and community. Yeah. Expound on that a little bit. How, yeah. how do you make the people feel, once you have them here, mm -hmm. that they have a place here? Well, again, that goes back to our friendliness. I think... Uh, once someone comes to visit with us, they automatically and immediately feel the friendliness of the church. We do something in the service called the, the passing of the peace where we stand up and we go and greet other people, and uh, especially people we don't know that might be first-time visitors. It's a scary thing to be a first-time visitor yes. because you might not be 
familiar with the order of worship and the strange things that church people sometimes say. Uh, and then we do want to, once we're there in, in the church, it's a key for us to have them become committed disciples. Right. Um, commitment is a key word. Uh, Jesus calls us not just to be saved, but to be one of his disciples. And that's a, a step up, a step above. It's saying that I'll lead my life in my workplace, in my home place, uh, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll be faithful in worship attendance and faithful in uh, mission and outreach to, to other people in the church. And then the last part of that is to help them find ministries in the church. Over the past three years, we've really been emphasizing uh, the need for us to reach out beyond the four walls of the church. So we've done a, a lot more mission events and outreach ministries that people, once they're in the church, don't just come to worship and sit and then go home and not do anything during the week, but we have opportunities for them to be committed in, in special events, reaching out to help the, uh, the hurting people of the world and the needy people of the world. Right. What are, what are some of the special events? Well, we do so much. We have... Uh, for instance, we do uh, uh, once about once every two months, we work with other churches on a rotation basis at Our Daily Bread, which is a fantastic ministry right. to help feed the hungry in our community. Uh, they're not open on Saturday, so these churches, us included, uh, will go down on Saturday morning and prepare a meal uh, for those that come and eat there. We usually have 60 to 80 people come and eat on Saturday. So we uh, are reaching out that way. Um, we uh, have been involved in more mission trips, which I think we'll talk about later, some specific mission events that we do. But we're constantly looking for opportunities to reach out in the community right. uh, to help other people. Missions begins at home. It absolutely, it begins at home. But uh, I think there's a saying I like, uh, think locally but react globally. Right. But, but we've been reaching out across borders to reach other people for the, uh, for the precious name of Jesus. Right. What about your daycare? Our daycare is something new. We started it one year ago. It just had its first birthday. Uh, and we were excited about providing this as a ministry opportunity uh, for the local community. There are so many working mothers right now that right. don't have good, adequate daycare. Uh, we have a great daycare director in Tammy Blackledge that's just doing a super job and a, a great staff back there. They're really attuned to the children. We have currently 51 children in, in daycare and I have room for a little more, but we're fast approaching that limit of, of right. what we can go to. But uh, we're excited about the program. We're using uh, church resources to do that. And, uh, uh, and we're finding that even we can make connection with parents in other ways that might uh, lead them into a deeper relationship with Jesus right. Christ. Because nothing's more important than their children. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you can start there, yeah. then I yeah. think that's a great place to start. Yes. What about your after school tutoring? We do an after school tutoring program. We uh, partnered with East Lawn Elementary School since they're close by the church. And during the school year, uh, we have about 10 to 12 tutors, uh, uh, or tutorees rather, that come to uh, be tutored in some areas that they might be weak in. And we have members of the church as volunteers that come and tutor them. We do it right here in this ministry center. And uh, have a very open concept with that where uh, they can feel safe and comfortable. And it's uh, been a very successful outreach of our, uh, of our church ministry. Kind of a tutor slash mentor yes, absolutely. situation. Absolutely. I think that's great. Yes. That is awesome. When we return, we're going to take a personal guided tour by Brother Gene to see some of their updated Sunday school rooms. So stay with us. We're in one of the newly renovated Sunday school rooms here at East Lawn United Methodist Church. And if you take a look around, you see how colorful it is. I yes. think that's really awesome that the kids can be so excited to come to Sunday school. And they are, and we have an excellent program. In fact, we, uh, we redid all of our Sunday school rooms. Jerry Pierce, who recently retired, was our children and program minister, and this was her brainchild. And uh, we got permission from the trustees to, to make the rooms much more colorful and kid-friendly, and we have definitely done that. So we've got four or five rooms like this, and even a media room where they can uh, watch uh, uh, cartoons or special uh, biblical shows. And uh, 
it has just been a great boom to the church to uh, for us to get involved in, in making this so much more presentable for our young children. Right. And it's been a real blessing. Makes them feel special yes. and excited to come to Sunday school. They are excited to come to Sunday school, and they, uh, they express that, that... Uh, that they like to come on Sunday morning because they know they're going to be in a colorful room and have a colorful program. And we use a, a special curriculum called Homeport where the classes are taught on a rotation basis so they don't stay in one room the whole time. They move uh, to different rooms to, to learn different things, and it's been an excellent program. We have two new directors of our Sunday school program for our children right now that are just doing an excellent job uh, Erin Riley and her mother Susan Riley are just doing an excellent job in continuing the work that Jerry started here and, uh, and expounding on that. So uh, uh, there's even more painting going to be going on in the next several weeks to, uh, to right. make, make some a little more comfortable right. and, and, and colorful. Right. Well, there must be some creative minds that attend at East Lawn. Do, you know, are there artists that that did all this and there are some that have artistic talents but it's just a lot of creativeness uh, thinking and uh, thinking outside the box a little bit and uh, doing the hard work that comes with doing this because they painted these rooms themselves it was not done by professionals so uh, we're excited about this I, I enjoy coming up here the kid in me gets excited when I walk into one of these rooms right so do you have an artist uh, fundraiser or anything that right this Past year we had uh, something unique and new for us. Uh, uh, Robert Weathersby initiated an art auction where we had artists within the church and outside of the church donated paintings. And uh, we had an auction for those, a silent auction. And all of the funds were used uh, to support a program called uh, Nothing But Nets, which is uh, going to children in Africa that are dying of malaria to provide mosquito nets for them. And that's been a, a most successful program. Our youth also got heavily involved in that and uh, raised over $2,000 just in, in what they were doing wow. that we could support this program. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're trying to become a little more artistic because that's one of God's uh, great given talents to uh, And we have a lot of talented artists within this church. Right. You yeah. can look around and yes, tell. Yes. So you mentioned Africa. Tell me some of the missions that you have for well, sponsorship. We, we have been emphasizing missions much more. Uh, in addition to working in our daily bread, uh, we've had our youth involved with missions. Uh, uh, when they go to Lake Junaluska, which is a Methodist camp in North Carolina, they have a mission day where they go, go out and work. We've had n numerous members take mission trips to Nicaragua, to Haiti, uh, and have come back changed and changed the life of the con congregation as they witnessed about what was going on there. Uh, our men in the church made... Uh, several trips to Burris, Louisiana uh, to work on a, a Methodist church down there that was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. And uh, we've had uh, several of our, of our men go to uh, Bay St. Louis to work as volunteers in mission to work on homes damaged by Katrina from there. Uh, so we are getting much more mission oriented. And uh, our United Methodist women are heavily involved in missions. They support a program called Promise, which is a local program for unwed mothers and for their babies, where we provide supplies for the newborns and for the mothers, and have become very active uh, in supporting that ministry. Um, our church is also uh, a support church uh, for a program that Dr. Bob Donald started called Family Promise, uh, where churches provide uh, for a week a residence for some of the homeless and then they go out in the daytime to a, a special care center and are helped uh, to be integrated back into the community and into the workforce. Uh, our United Methodist men have been very active in, in doing mission projects. We have two fish fries a year here, some good catfish. You're invited to come next time we have one in October, I believe. I will and, mark uh, the date. <laughs> and it's good catfish, but we usually, the funds that we... Uh, have raised from that, have gone to support a, a fellow Methodist pastor in uh, his battle with cancer. Uh, when Officer Bond in Ocean Springs was lost at sea, we helped support his wife and his children with some of the funds we raised. So we're That's continually awesome. looking for things to reach out and, uh, and to support the community in the area. 
And there are plenty of things to do if we will just open our eyes and there are be plenty willing. things to do we heavily support the salvation army here we do uh, uh work with them in supporting uh, those that might be having a hard time financially with uh, uh, food or with light bills and uh, we collect barrels of food for the salvation army and then uh, help in other ways when we're able to do so we've got a very caring giving church that's given uh, very well to our, our benevolence fund, which helps people in the community. Right. It sounds like it. Um, tell me how your education may have prepared you and helped you yeah. in the missions area. Well, the United Methodist Church is, places a heavy emphasis on uh, uh, being a, a well-educated United Methodist pastor. I am an ordained elder uh, in the Mississippi Conference of the United Methodist Church, uh, and that required that I ten, attended seminary. So I've attended uh, Candler School of Theology at Emory University in Atlanta, Wesley Biblical Seminary in Jackson, Mississippi, and then I graduated from Memphis Theological Seminary uh, with a master's degree uh, there. And uh, then we're required every year to get 20 additional hours every year in continuing education uh, to keep us tuned in to uh, uh, what's going on. To new things. Yes, yes. Yes. And that's been a... a a great part of my development, uh, uh, it was at one of these events that I really felt the Lord speaking to me again about uh, evangelism and reaching out to uh, save those that have no relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. Well, I think it's been such uh, an eye-opening conversation with you to see all the places of ministry that yes. you make available to your people yes. here at East Lawn. Right. Because, you know, let's face it, everybody needs to feel needed. Yes, they do. Yes, they and, do. And if, if you have a place for them, it may not be in the pulpit. Right. It, it can be in a choir. It can be in a daycare. It can be um, after school touching a young person's life. Yes. It's just, I think it's awesome that yeah. you've made so many places of ministry, services of ministry available. And I, I just commend you for that. It's been a pleasure to be here at East Lawn United Methodist Church. Thank you for having us. Thank you, and God bless you. And remember, if you'd like to see your church featured, give us a call or email through our website, wkfk.com. I'm Rena Danley, and thanks for watching Church Spotlight.